Hello, and welcome to the QSO Today <laughs> Ham Expo 2021 presentation on Introduction to Antenna Modeling Using EasyNEC. My name is Greg Algieri, WA1JXR, and I will be your presenter today. Let's get right into uh, uh, the presentation. So the goal of this seminar is to um, show you how to get started uh, doing antenna simulations. We're going to review uh, a bunch of the information that's in Chapter 8 of the ARRL Antenna Handbook, which is the chapter on antenna uh, simulations. Um, show how easy it is to get started. We're going to use a program called EasyNEC. Uh, that program is also provided with the uh, ARRL Antenna Handbook. And we're going to show you some of the inputs and outputs of the EasyNEC program and hopefully show you that you don't need to be a computer wizard or an engineer to use the EasyNEC tool and hopefully get you interested in uh, trying it. A little bit about myself. I was first licensed as a novice uh, back in 1967 as WN1JXR. I later upgraded to general and extra class. My involvement in amateur radio led me to pursue a career in electrical engineering, and I earned a uh, BS and MSWE degrees from URI. I uh, started work for Raytheon Company, and we worked for Raytheon Company for 42 years. I just retired uh, in December of 2019, and I worked for them as a senior principal RF and microwave electrical design engineer. Uh, working on radar systems. Uh, I'm not a contester or a DX chaser. I'm just an average uh, rag chew operator. I enjoy getting on the air and uh, making contacts with fellow hams. Uh, I also enjoy restoring um, older radios from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, old tube radios or uh, boat anchor rigs, as we sometimes call them, or radios that glow in the dark. Uh, I'm uh, involved with the local ham club in the area. I do a lot of teaching for them. And uh, I enjoy QRP operation as well. I'm one of the founding members of the New England QRP club. And I enjoy getting on the air, operating amplitude modulation with the older radios. Uh, but my favorite part of the hobby is getting on and doing uh, CW contacts, CW, which I call the original digital mode. So in the good old days of amateur radio, when it first started out, it started out as a bunch of radio enthusiasts, basically uh, experimenting and wanting to learn more about radio. And even back when I started uh, in the 60s, um, uh, you could build a lot of your own equipment back then. But of course, today with the um, uh, evolution of, uh, of hardware and the large-scale integrated circuits and surface mount technology, and the overall complexity of the of the ham equipment today, it's pretty tough for the average ham to uh, to build their own gear. But antennas is something that we can still uh, experiment with. We can build our homebrew our own antennas, and I think it's a great fun part of the hobby and a, a great thing. And of course, antenna modeling goes a long way with helping you um, uh, experiment with antennas. Um, seeing how new antennas will work, and uh, uh, seeing, uh, looking at, uh, uh, you know, how that new antenna in the backyard may, may be the latest thing that you want to put out there. And, of course, for the QRP operator, having a good antenna is the key to uh, having a success, uh, or successful uh, QRP operation. So what is antenna modeling? Antenna modeling is a computer simulation of the performance of the antenna. Uh, the computer simulation allows antenna performance to be analyzed and uh, parameters to be changed to see how they might affect the performance of the antenna. Uh, what, are the, what are some of the parameters that we look at? Of course, the antenna gain uh, is one. If you have a directional antenna, then front-to-back ratio or beam width uh, might be something you might want to look at. And of course, takeoff angle is very important with an antenna, especially if you want to work uh, long distance. Um, 
Also, the uh, simulation allows you to look at uh, the impedance at the feed point of the antenna, and therefore you can um, get an idea of what the SWR is going to be. And then, of course, you get um, what's called the antenna pattern or the far field plots. Uh, you can see what's called a three-dimensional plot, or you can see two-dimensional plots, uh, the azimuth plot, which is kind of the, uh, the northeast-southwest uh, indica indication of how the antenna is going to work, and then the elevation plot, which shows you what the uh, takeoff angle uh, of, of the antenna is. A little bit about the history of antenna modeling. Antenna modeling uses software called the NEC formula, uh, that stands for the Numerical Electromagnetic Code. It was originally developed by Lawrence Livermore Labs. It was originally designed, it would only operate on large mainframes, but they developed um, a mini neck version that would allow on PCs. And of course, now there are a whole bunch of different versions that will operate on PCs uh, Easy Neck, Four Neck 2, Mama Gal, Mini Neck, there's a whole bunch of them uh, that will operate on PCs. For this presentation, we're going to focus on uh, the Easy Neck program, which was developed by Roy W7EL. So, what do the antenna plots look at? Here, you see a typical uh, three-dimensional plot. Uh, if you take a horizontal slice through that three-dimensional plot, you get what's called the azimuth plot. Once again, that's kind of the northeast-southwest look. And if you take a vertical slice through that three-dimensional plot. Uh, you get the elevation plot, which shows you kind of the uh, takeoff angle. You can also look at the impedance at the feed point of the dipole or the antenna. Here you see a 80-meter uh, dipole, 130-foot uh, wire, um, and looked at the impedance over the 3 to 4 megahertz range. And so you see the, uh, the SWR uh, Resonance dip there at about uh, 3.5 megahertz with a about a 1.4 to 1 SWR. Uh, what are some of the things we have to tell the model? Well, we have to tell the model the physical layout of the antenna, whether it be a dipole, a Yagi, or a quad, or a vertical, whatever it might be. We have to kind of tell it what the physical layout is. We have to tell it the frequency that we're interested uh, in uh, looking at the antenna at. We have to describe its height above ground. We have to tell the model what type of conductor we're using, whether it be wire or tubing, and any losses with that. We have to tell the model what kind of ground we're placing the antenna over and any kind of losses with that. We have to place a source at the antenna or the transmitter. Uh, and if we have any loads or traps or anything in the antenna, we can also describe those. And, of course, we can uh, hook up a transmission line to the antenna as well to model the overall antenna system. So let's start out with your typical half-wave dipole antenna. Um, uh, if you look at the uh, frequency for wavelength, the wavelength uh, is the speed of light uh, divided by the frequency uh, of, of the uh, signal. Uh, and if you convert that so that you have the length of a half-wave dipole in feet and also convert it so that you're dealing with uh, megahertz and not hertz, uh, you, you get the familiar formula that we've all seen before. Uh, 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz gives you the length of the half-wave dipole in feet. A half-wave dipole uh, works well. It's a resonant antenna. And it works, one of the reasons it works so well is because at resonance, the feed point impedance of the antenna is in the 50 to 70 ohm range, which happens to be a real good match for coax, so you get good uh, power transfer from the feed line into the antenna. The actual impedance of the antenna does vary with height above ground. So in the model, what we do is we, we represent the in this case, the wire of the dipole, um, we, we can represent it actually, even though a real dipole would have a center insulator and would be constructed of two wires, in the model, we can represent the dipole as just a single wire. And we can place the source then at the midpoint of the, of the wire. The model 
breaks the wire up into segments, so you have to specify how many segments you want. Um, the NEC uh, algorithm guideline for the number of segments is they like to see at least 10 segments per half wavelength. Uh, insulators are not required in the model. You just basically just show the wire. And like I said, it can the dipole can be modeled as a single wire, and then the source can be placed at any segment of the wire. So you can do a center-fed dipole. You can place it at the end for an end-fed, or you can do an off-center-fed dipole. Various things you can do with the uh, with the model. So we also, as I mentioned, we have to describe to the software the orientation of the antenna with with respect to ground. So here you see the standard XYZ Cartesian coordinates, and we have a single wire labeled as wire number one. That wire has an end one and an end two, and we've located that wire some height above ground. Uh, Z high, and we've located it along the Y axis. Uh, I could have just as easily located that wire along the X axis or at some midpoint part uh, somewhere between the X and Y axis, but uh, modeling it like this along one of the axes is just a very easy thing to do, so I chose to do it like that. So let's talk a little bit about antenna gain. And often with antennas, there's something referred to as an isotropic radiator. Well, what does that mean? Well, you think of if you think of a light bulb uh, uh, with no shade on it, or even better, think of a flashlight. And if you take the flashlight apart so that just the bulb is sticking out, um, think of that. That can be thought of as a point source radiator. It's there's no such thing that really exists in the real world. Uh, but it's a source where light uh, or where energy emanates from in all directions, equally in all directions. And with all things, uh, conservation of energy applies. So your antenna is a passive device. We're supplying energy to the antenna, but we're not supplying any additional power. Or there's no amplifier in the antenna itself. So how do we get an antenna gain? Well, antenna gain is created by just directing the available power from that isotropic radiator to a particular direction. So think of the flashlight. So you have that light bulb again uh, by itself that looks like an isotropic radiator that emanated light in all directions. If we now take that, that little light bulb and we install it into a you know, uh, reflector like in a flashlight with a lens, We've now taken that isotropic radiator, which was putting power out in all directions, and we focused that energy to a particular direction. Well, that's how we get antenna gain. We get the antenna gain in that same way. And uh, gain of an antenna is also um, referenced using uh, the term uh, decibels. And uh, if it's De uh, decibels reference to an isotropic radiator, uh, it would be labeled as dBi. If it's decibels reference to a dipole antenna, which is a, a good reference source, the dipole is kind of our go-to uh, ham radio antenna. And so often with a, with a Yagi, you'd want to know, okay, how much better is this Yagi gain antenna uh, over a typical dipole? So that would be shown in dBd. And the gain of a dipole reference to an isotropic radiator is 2.15. So let's talk about our antenna system a little bit and uh, some of the effects of uh, that ground. Like I said, ground is like a mirror to the RF energy, but it is not a perfect mirror. Uh, some of the energy that hits the ground uh, gets lost and absorbed into the ground, not all the energy that hits it from the antenna is is reflected. And so those ground losses affect what the radiation pattern of the antenna looks like. And so the antenna height above ground affects uh, what the radiation pattern was going to look like. And you'll see that a little later coming up when we do some of the actual modeling. Um, and it's a term not often used much in hand radio circles. Uh, but is used often in commercial broadcast, commercial radio and TV 
uh, circles, something called radiation resistance. So if you think of your antenna system, uh, you, you apply a certain amount of power to the uh, antenna, and a certain amount of that power gets radiated. If you take and calculate the equivalent resistance that would dissipate the same amount of power that was radiated from the antenna, that resistance would be known as what's called the radiation resistance. If we take all of the other losses within the system, like um, uh, our conductors, whether it be copper or aluminum that the antenna is made of, uh, they are not perfect conductors. There are a certain amount of resistance associated with the conductors, so there's a certain amount of loss with the conductors. There's also the loss due to, uh, like I mentioned above, uh, the loss due to the ground, because the ground is not a perfect uh, reflector. Some of the energy is lost in the ground. And if we take all those losses and lump them together, we can come up with an equivalent, is, e equivalent resistance uh, representing the system losses uh, within the antenna system. And you can see here, you can represent the overall antenna system uh, by a simple series um, uh, resistance circuit of those antenna losses in series with the radiation resistance. And since power is equal to I squared R, we're putting a certain amount of current into the antenna, and power is equal to I squared R, then obviously the bigger the R is, the more power that's dissipated in either resistor. So we'd like to have the radiation resistance as large as possible and certainly much larger in comparison to the resistance associated with the system losses. That way, the maximum amount of power would be radiated from the antenna system. So um, analysis, uh, the antenna program, modeling program, like I mentioned, can also analyze the uh, antenna impedance at the feed point, and therefore we can look at the SWR, and you'll see some some uh, demonstration of that coming up. So uh, Easy Neck does allow you to analyze the impedance of the antenna, and therefore the SWR. Uh, Easy Neck version 6 also, also includes now models where you can include the transmission line so you can model the overall uh, system of the antenna. Another good program for dealing with transmission lines, which comes with the ARRL antenna book, is a program called Transmission Lines for Windows. So when you, when you open the EasyNet program, here's the window that you see. And uh, I'll go over it. It has the normal uh, menu buttons along the top, you know, file and plot and view uh, that you see in many, many software programs. There's a bunch of action buttons along the left-hand uh, side here. And you'll see some of those that we'll use. And then there's what's called selection buttons. So the main information window contains all of the information about the model and you can click on these selection buttons to change uh, that information uh, in the information window uh, ab ab about the model that, that you've loaded into the program. So I'm going to stop sharing the presentation at this point and I'm going to bring up the um, Easy Neck program. So there you go. There's the uh, there's the Easy Neck uh, program. Oh, let me. Uh, I'm going to uh, do one thing here. Just want to make sure that that's not in the way in the background. Let me. Uh, okay, bring up the program. And so there's the there's the program, uh, Easy Neck program. Unfortunately, it doesn't get any bigger than that. That's as large as the uh, software lets you make the uh, make the screen. But it's okay. So the first thing I'd like to do is, um, as I mentioned, is if you click the open button, it'll bring you, and there's a whole bunch of models already um, included with the software program. So starting off, you don't have to worry, oh, how am I going to create a model? I don't know how to do that. There's a whole bunch of models already created. You can go in and load one of the models, and one of the simple ones here is something called BYV, uh, BY dipole, and it stands for backyard dipole. So I'm going to click on that model, 
and click open and you can see here that it loaded that software model into the EasyNet program. It loaded that file in. And one of the first things I like to do then is to click this uh, view antenna button. And let me, uh, let me share that screen with you so you can see it better. So here you see the, um, the view antenna uh, screen uh, uh, being a, um, a single wire represented by the black line there. And the number next to it indicates that that's what we call wire number one in the model. Uh, the green dots along it are the segments that the wire was broken up into within the model. And then the circle uh, tells you where the source is located. In this case, because it's a center-fed dipole, we've located the source in the center of the wire. Let me stop sharing that. Let's go back to the uh, main program again. And so... Um, so the next thing that I like to do is um, look at uh, information here, something called the wires file. And if I uh, share that with you, you'll see that it's a tabular file. And it's showing here that we are, we've modeled something wire number one. We've given it, and it has an end one and an end two. And so N1 is located at X equal to 0, Y equal to 0, and Z equal to 30 feet high. And N2 is at X equal to 0, Y equal to 33.43. So it's 33 foot long wire. And once again, it's at um, a height of 30 feet. Um, we, we're using number 12 wire. We've broken it up into 11 segments. And for insulation, uh, we've got a dielectric constant of 1 and a thickness of 0, which means we don't have any insulation on the wire. So this is, um, this is bare num number 12 copper wire. Uh, you can model wire that has insulation on it as well. All right, so let me, uh, let me stop sharing that. And let's go back to the, uh, to the main screen again. And so we're telling it that we're at a frequency of 14 megahertz. Uh, this is a 20 meter dipole, 33 feet long. Uh, we have one source. Let me bring up the source uh, window and show you that. There's the source window with source number one. We've located that source at wire number one and we wanna locate it 50% from N1 therefore in the center. Uh, here's the actual position. It was able to locate it at the 50% point and it's located in segment number six. We have a relative amplitude of one. Uh, we don't have any phase offset in the source and we've modeled it as uh, th uh, an I there which means it's a current source. Stop sharing that and let's go back to the main program again. So let's see, other things here, um, uh, ground type, we have it over what's called a real, uh, a real ground. And that's uh, a, a good thing. It's a pretty much like average ground that you'd find in most locations. So that's a good, a good ground type to use. Uh, wire loss is currently set to zero. I want to change that. And I'm going to make that copper wire because that's what we're really going to use. Uh, units are in feet. Default plot type is set to elevation. I want to change that. I like to make it a, a three. Look at the three-dimensional plot, and everything else you can leave at default. So what I like to do now is um, click this. Uh, uh, I think we're ready to go uh, with the uh, doing the actual simulation. So if I click the button here called Far Field Plot then it'll go off and actually calculate the, uh, the far field of the antenna and show you the dimensional plot. And if I stop share and share that plot with you, you'll see there is the three-dimensional plot of the, 
uh, 20-meter dipole at 30 feet. And one of the neat things you can do is you can put the cursor on the plot and uh, uh, left-click and drag, and you can actually move the, uh, the, the plot around. So now we're kind of doing a top-down view of the plot so you see the typical uh, sort of figure eight pattern that a dipole has. Uh, the wires along the the Y axis here, so the maximum radiation is broadside to the wire. Okay, if I uh, I can now uh, take and uh, click on what's called. Uh, uh, let me reset that back. And if I click on something called the azimuth slice, you can see, you can kind of see a, a red highlight there. It's taken the horizontal slice through the three-dimensional uh, plot at the maximum gain point. And if I want to look at that now in two dimensions, look at that slice, I can click on the show two-dimensional plot. And I just need to share that screen with you. And so there's what the two-dimensional plot looks like. This is kind of the north, south, east, west plot. Once again, the wire is running along the vertical axis here. And so you see the maximum uh, gain is off broadside to the wire. Uh, it's showing a gain of about 6.7 uh, dB. And if I click on the elevation slice, a vertical slice through that three-dimensional plot, it's now showing the the uh, vertical pattern of the antenna, with uh, so you can see the maximum gain takeoff angle is at about 35 degrees here. So that's not bad. Uh, that will be a, a decent performing antenna, and it will give you uh, give you some um, some good uh, some good uh, performance. So let me stop sharing all of that and go back to the main. Uh, uh, screen it once again and share that. Let me close out some of these other plots here. Okay, so we're back to the main screen again. Um, one thing I can do here, which is kind of of interest, let me let me go to the wires file, and instead of that dipole being at um, 30 feet, I'm going to change that to 70 feet. 30 feet was about a half a wavelength. 70 feet is going to be a little more than uh, a full wavelength. Uh, so I've, I've changed that. And now let's go back and uh, do the far field plot again. And if I now go and show you what that far field plot looks like now with the antenna at uh, 70 feet, see that that plot looks quite a bit different than what the plot looked like at 30 feet. So you see that height above ground uh, has a large effect on what the what the antenna the antenna pattern actually looks like. And if we look at this plot now in a little bit more detail, uh, I'm going to do that azimuth slice again. You see the slice down through that maximum gain, the lower port portion of the three-dimensional plot. And if I click on the show 2D plot again, let me uh, share that plot with you. So there's the there's the two-dimensional uh, north, south, east, west plot. Now you see uh, much deeper nulls off the uh, ends of the wire, therefore more gain. Uh, the gain is increased now up to 7.8 uh, dBi. Uh, and uh, but one of the even better things and why it's uh, great to have the antenna as high as you can if we look at the the elevation slice now we see that the the takeoff angle at the maximum gain point has lowered from 35 degrees down to 15 degrees so this is going to be a much better antenna for um, working long distance because uh, with that lower takeoff angle you're going to get a much longer bounce uh, off of the uh, ionosphere and be able to contact uh, DX uh, stations further away. All right, let's stop sharing that. Let's go back to the, uh, the main screen again. Share that with you. 
And let's look at, I'm going to click on this, uh, this SWR tab here. And it, a screen pops up and says, uh, you know, SWR sweep parameters. So I'm going to sweep the antenna from 14 megahertz, let's say, to 15 megahertz. And I'm going to do it uh, every 0.1 megahertz. So we'll let that run. And it came up with the, um, let me share the, uh, the SWR plot with you. So there you see the uh, the plot of the uh, SWR of the antenna from 14 megahertz to 15 megahertz. Uh, and if I move the cursor to kind of where the minimum is here, uh, you see that uh, uh, the minimum is occurring toward the high end of the band, 14.3 uh, uh, megahertz. So the ham band runs from 14 to 14.35. So ideally, we would probably want to maybe lengthen this antenna uh, a little bit so that the uh, uh, the resin dip would maybe occur a little bit further down uh, toward the center of the ham band. But depending on whether you were a phone or a CW operator, you could optimize the performance by varying the length uh, uh, for for the type of operation that you want to do. Uh, you can move this cursor along at any freq frequency and you can see that it gives you the SWR at that point. It also gives you the, com the complex impedance. Um, uh, uh, so you get the resistive and the reactive uh, comp component at this point. For example, at 14.2 megahertz, it's uh, uh, 69 minus J16. Uh, so it's 69 ohms of resistance and 16 uh, ohms of minus, which means it's capacitive uh, or reactance at that point. Okay, so let me stop sharing that. Let's go back to uh, the main screen again. And I can maybe show you some other... Um, what some other models look like. Like I say, there's a lot of built-in models. Uh, let's look at some other ones. Uh, one that might be of interest here is this is a five-element 20-meter Yagi. So if I load that in and click the uh, View Antenna tab, uh, and then uh, click the, I'm sorry, stop sharing and uh, share that View tab with you. You see that uh, here you have the model uh, for the five element Yagi. Um, driven element is in, in the middle, sort of in the middle there with the source you see located in the middle. Uh, a single reflector behind it and then the three directors in front of it. And this is actually a very complex model. You can see it's made up of 55 wires and what they've actually done in this model is they've modeled each element of the Yagi as aluminum tubes that taper in, in uh, diameter as you go out. Uh, just like a, a real live um, Yagi made out of tapered aluminum tubes uh, would, would be made. So this is a very accurate model of what an aluminum uh, actual Yagi would look like. Uh, Stop sharing that. Let's go back and we can look at some other, uh, some other models here. How about um, uh, here's another one. This is a uh, uh, a two element uh, two element quad. Let me let's share that uh, with you. Here you see the two element quad. Each quad loop is made out of four wires. You have the driven uh, element loop here with the source down at the middle of the bottom wire and the reflector element here uh, on the other side. So this would be a, a two, two element quad. Let's, uh, let's look at some other ones. Uh, 
Oh, let's see. Uh, might want to look at a uh, a vertical antenna. Let's look at a vertical. share that screen with you so here's your here's the model of the vertical antenna you see the vertical element there being shown as wire number one with the source uh, at the bottom of the wire and then you see um, four ground radials uh, wires two three four and five indicating the radials uh, at the base of the vertical antenna so there's a lot of different models available already with the program and of course once you get used to uh, knowing how the models work you can you can create your own models okay um, I think I think I've shown everything I want to show uh, at the present time with the uh, program so let me stop sharing that and let's go back to the uh, presentation and let me get that back into full screen mode uh, there's some uh, model accuracy accuracy test that you can do there's something called a convergence test and an average gain test uh, and more details on that are located the easy neck program has an excellent excellent uh, help file uh, the help file is really more like a instruction manual and so um, uh, learning how to do all this stuff including these accuracy tests is all built within the uh, within the model itself but performing these tests if you have any uh, suspicion that something might be uh, funny with your model and you're concerned that it might not be representing uh, what should be happening in the real world you can perform these tests and it'll tell you whether whether it is or not um, I've talked with Roy a few times and you can go to his site uh, www.easyneck.com and available for free on his site there's a demo version of Easy Neck uh, the demo version has a limitation of only being able to use 20 segments but as you can see with simple antennas like dipoles and many other antennas, uh, 20 segments is uh, sufficient for modeling those. So what I suggest is um, uh, go to the Easy Next site, download the demo version for free, and give it a try. You can have a lot of fun, and you can learn a lot about antennas by uh, playing around with the program, uh, take advantage of all the models uh, that come with the program itself. Uh, all Easy Neck uh, versions come with uh, antenna models built in. And of course, uh, there's a version of um, the Easy Neck demo program uh, that comes with the, uh, an the antenna handbook as well. Uh, if you want to upgrade, then there are uh, programs on the Easy Neck site that you can download. Um, uh, Easy Neck uh, version 6 is the latest, and the the regular Easy Neck program, not the demo version, allows you to use up to 500 segments. And then there's an Easy Neck Plus uh, version 6 also that allows you up to 2,000 segments. Um, and all of the, both of those are very reasonably priced. You're talking like in the, in the $100 range. Uh, so if it's something, try the demo version. And if it's something you like and you want to do some more complex modeling, uh, then you can... Um, purchase and and download <coughs> one of these programs i i have easy neck plus uh, and it works really great for everything that i've done so by all means uh, think about giving it a try so i hope this uh, introduction to the antenna modeling uh, has helped you maybe pique your interest in trying to want to use antenna modeling in the e neck program um, get the ARRL Antenna Handbook if you want to read some more about antenna modeling and Easy Neck. Uh, there's a whole chapter in the Antenna Handbook uh, or devoted to that. So then, so then try your hand at uh, modeling uh, some antennas. And those antennas that you dream about putting out in your backyard, uh, you can now uh, cr create an antenna model for it. Uh, try it out on your on your computer and see if the performance of the antenna 
is going to uh, is going to fit uh, fit your needs. Um, of course, after this presentation, if you happen to come up with questions, by all means, feel free to email me. Uh, my call sign WA1JXR at net or my call sign WA1JXR at Comcast.net uh, will get the email to me. I'll be glad to uh, answer any of your questions that I can. So 73s, thank you for your attention and attendance. And we will now continue on with the uh, question and answer portion of the presentation. Anybody have any questions for Greg? Greg, uh, KD1RV, Larry. Uh, do you have, I have one question. Uh, will this program work with VHF Yaggies? Yes, sir, it will. Yeah, will this uh, program work with VHF Yaggies? Uh, is my is my audio not coming through? No, I hear you. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, it will work. You can model VHF Yaggies uh, uh, without any issue, you know. Uh, so, no problem with that. I heard that he was no no longer going to charge for that. Is that correct? Yeah, I was gonna. That was one thing I was going to mention. So the the video is a little bit out of date. The good news is that um, uh, Roy Llewellyn, W7EL, at the end of uh, 2021 or the beginning of 2022, uh, retired his company, but he uh, so he is offering uh, a professional version of EasyNeck as freeware for free. Uh, I believe it's equivalent to that EasyNeck Plus or even better. So there's lots of segments. You can go to the easyneck.com website and download it for free, and it has all the features of uh, some of his professional software. So that's that's great news. You can get all of that for free and have fun modeling anything you want. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Do these? I have a question. Yeah. Do these also do like a Moxon or a hex beam? Yeah, you if if you can describe it in that X Y Z plot, you can model it. Good, good. Yep. I've always had a lot of interest in building antennas from when I was licensed back in '91. Yeah, well, that's the great thing about this software is, um, you know, you can you can try different things, different antennas. Just if you, but you learn so much about antennas because. Uh, I, I mean, even what I just, the simple thing I just showed you, how the antenna pattern varies with height above ground, right? You can, you can play with that, change the length of the wires, you know, all kinds of crazy things and see how that affects the pattern and the uh, feed point impedance, i.e. the, uh, or, or the SWR. So it's a great, right. you know, tool to learn. Yeah. Sounds very good. Uh, Greg, 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 can you? Does it allow you to model a magnetic loop antenna? Uh, yep, you can. Oh, and then I have another question: Can you also work with 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 metric dimension? Yes. Yep, you can. Uh, I had it in feet, but you can do meters. You can have the lengths in uh, wavelengths, uh, inches, whatever you want. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Greg, uh, Charlie. Oh, sorry. Yep. Sorry. Uh, Greg, Charlie, Casey, you want to okay. Most of all my antennas are in my attic. How do I model something like that? Well, I would just model the antenna itself. I mean, um, you know, it's, it's difficult to model things around the antenna, especially like wood and trees and stuff. It's almost impossible to, but those things have very, because they're not conductors, Typically, have very little effect on the performance of the antenna itself. So, uh, it, but the height above ground is the f actual physical height above the ground. Yes. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. Greg, I noticed that uh, on the website there's a uh, EasyNet Pro 2 Plus version seven. 
Um, have you used that? And what's, uh, if any, major differences between that and what you've uh, presented? Uh, there is no difference between that and what I've presented. There's a, there's a few more features and more segments, more capability, but the tool operates exactly the same way, Ray. Okay. Hmm. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else? All the, all the, uh, all the screens and the buttons uh, that I showed are the same uh, with that uh, version seven Pro, which is the, which is the free version that Roy is offering now. What about the balance? You know, matching tr transformers, balance, and such. Yep, you could model them as well. There's a uh, there's a tab uh, on the main page for I think it's called loads, uh, and there's also a, a tab for transformers. So you can model you can model balance, unins, uh, you know, loading coils, traps, uh, all of that stuff you can model. Thank if you. you go to the if if you go to the help file uh, on the program and just put in you know ballon or trap or whatever you're interested in, uh, all kinds of information will come up uh, to help you show you how to how to do that. All right. Any other questions? I guess not. If, if you think of anything as you're playing around or whatever, you get stuck or something, by all, by all means, uh, don't hesitate to blast me an email. I, I'll be glad to help you if I can. It's good. I, I wrote down your, your email address just in case. It's definitely very interesting. Yeah, great. Give it a, give it a try. It's a lot of fun. Oh, I'm sure. Anybody else have any questions for Greg? Okay, I guess not. Thank you, Greg. I certainly enjoyed your presentation. You're welcome. I'm glad to glad to do it. Anybody else have any uh, other uh, announcements or uh, anybody from the Franklin County Club that have any announcements? Into QFT has her hand up. Nope, oh, didn't see that. Yep, go ahead, Joe. That was I was just trying to clap instead of raise my hand. I'm sorry, but no. um, <laughs> well, while I'm already talking, I do have what what about a loop? Um, they they have model. I mean, X Y on a straight line, but what about circular type antennas? Is there a way to model them? Well, there's yeah. It the model only has straight lines, but what you can do is you can make a lot of straight lines, you know, make it look like a circle. So you can approximate a circle, but you can't actually get curved lines. But uh, if you put enough segments and enough wires in there, it, it'll be a close enough approximation that it'll work. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. If nobody else has any questions, I'd like to thank, uh, thank Greg. It was an excellent presentation. Thank you for joining us tonight. My pleasure. Anybody else have anything for the meeting tonight? I guess not. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending the HCRA May meeting.